Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about... Just kidding. We're talking about vitamins and supplements today. Gotcha. <laughs> Colorado Health Coach. My name is Elizabeth and I am a certified health and life coach from Southern Colorado. Before I dive into... T- Before I dive on into today's episode, I'd like to share my appreciation and insight for today. So today is Friday, and I normally have my therapy appointments on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. I absolutely love my therapist, Rachel. She has helped me so much throughout this past, I want to say month and a half I've been going to her. I've really grown I guess more so them controlling me, I'm able to control them in a way I wasn't able to before. As a child, I really struggled with just expressing my emotion in a healthy way. It just wasn't what I wanted. And yet I didn't know any other way of going about expressing emotion. So I feel as I've grown older, I've experienced life, more of life. (laughs) There's still so much more to experience. But I've actually grown and matured emotionally, but it's nothing compared to what I've experienced this past month and a half with going to therapy and just talking about certain traumatic events during my childhood and triggers and my body dysmorphia and everything like that. So I don't know. I just am so appreciative that I'm even able to go to therapy. I'm able to afford therapy. My insight is I'm so appreciative that I'm where I am in regards to just my mental, emotional, physical journey of being healthier. And along with that, I feel more content. You know, I feel not that I wasn't a whole person before, but I feel more in tuned spiritually, I guess you could say. I feel like an even more drawn out and established person. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but it does to me. So that's the wording that I'm going to go with. Recently, I've been doing this therapy exercise called light therapy. Basically, what you do is they stand a tripod in front of you. Normally, this is what they have me do. Um, and there's a bar with lights on it. And you have your eyes have to follow the little light that transfers from each light bulb very, very quickly. Might I add, your eyes have to follow it. And essentially, you... I don't want to say you go into a trance. But for me, at least, time didn't seem real time didn't exist because what felt like two minutes of me doing this exercise was actually like 18, 20 minutes of me just responding and feeling my emotion and reliving that traumatic memory and just talking about it out loud. And what's interesting is it's only one hour, I realize, but that one hour makes so much of a difference in my life at least because like my therapist Rachel says a lot of your healing happens outside of the office so that one whole week that I'm away from her I am healing mentally emotionally just healing internally and sometimes I don't even realize it until that next session comes and we talk about my trauma level Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how I'm feeling, my anxiety levels, and just how this past week has gone. And lately, they've been going really, really well. This past few weeks, uh, I've been a lot less depressed. I've been been connecting with people that sometimes I don't really consider, you know, connecting with. Um, Tonight, I'm actually gonna go out with one of my friends from work and you know he's somebody that normally I don't really hang out with outside of work unless it's with one of our other friends but it's gonna be like a one-on-one kind of thing which is gonna be great you know we're gonna go probably to the bowling alley play pool 
you know, have a few drinks. It'll be great. But yeah, I feel like I'm socializing with more people. I'm expanding my circle. I still have a very close circle of friends, but in regards to friends in general and actually taking the time to hang out with them once in a while, I'm expanding my circle in that regard. So, oh my gosh, I just seen 555 on the uh, little timer and 555 are angel numbers. Any numbers with a sequence in them, whether it's 444, 555, 999, 1212, you know, those are considered angel numbers. And I just find that so interesting. And that's another thing that I've really been getting into is angel numbers and just, I guess, doing a deeper dive into spirituality. And as per usual, I have my Camp Crystal Lake mug from Friday the 13th that I got, I want to say I got it online at Target during some time this year but I absolutely love it. It is so me. And it is almost scary spooky season. Uh, a part of expanding my circle and just going out of my comfort zone and, you know, just interacting with new people because, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Even though some people try to drag you down, make you feel guilty about hanging out with other people, you know, you want to expand your circle in order to meet new people, in order to experience different things because every single relationship is different. You know, my re my relationship with my roommate, you know, even though I consider her like my sister, it's completely different than the relationship that I have with Xavier, my brother. So, you know, even though I consider one my sister and one is my actual brother, you know, like those, even though those are like sibling dynamics, they're completely different relationships. That's just an example. But when it comes to friends not wanting you to expand your circle that's a reflection of their fear, wanting to hold you back. And you shouldn't be held back in any way, shape, or form because we only have this one life. So we might as well just meet as many people, experience as many things, hear as many stories as we can while we're here. At least that's my perspective on everything. But therapy so far has been going very well for me and Honestly, there's days that I just don't want to go. I don't want to go because it is that part of my brain that is self-sabotaging. Everybody has this quality about them. Every single person does. And it's, and it's a concept in coaching that I was taught that's called the critter brain. So the critter brain basically is a defense mechanism. It's there to protect you from being harmed either physically or mentally, emotionally, anything like that. But the critter brain does protect you, but it also can hinder you because there's times where you should ignore your critter brain completely. And it's a scary, it's a scary thing because that's you going out on a limb against your, you know, so-called better judgment that's supposed to protect you. But sometimes it just holds you back. And those are the moments where you have to just push yourself because therapy has been going so well for me that honestly, recently, I did not want to go. Not this week, but last week. I did not want to go. But I pushed myself to go because I remembered how I feel after I come out of therapy. I remember just this light feeling and just feeling like the world is lifted off my shoulders because sometimes I have good cry, sometimes I tear up a little bit, sometimes I don't shed a single little tear. You know, it just depends on the topic we're talking about, how I feel that day, and just how much I want to be vulnerable and open up emotionally. So there's so many different factors that play into it. But after a good cry, honestly, and talking to somebody, and sometimes we don't even talk. Like sometimes we just do that light therapy that whole hour, and it just, it is very emotionally draining. So you just come out of your sessions, at least for me this is my experience, feeling very light and feeling so weightless, like the world is just a little bit better for a little, for a little while for you, you know, because you got to express and vent your emotions to someone else who isn't going to judge you, isn't there to judge you, doesn't have a bias, you know, towards you, against you, anything like that, a very neutral party. And it's very soothing.
that is the best word I can use to describe it is soothing. And I absolutely love it. I am so glad that my roommate, Brittany, uh, convinced me to go and set up the appointment and actually take control of my mental health. So it is finally time to dive on into the d the topic of today, the official topic. So that is vitamins and supplements. Some people wonder why take a daily multivitamin and does it do anything for you? There are several experts that agree with taking a multivitamin and others who disagree, but who's correct? This is such a controversial topic, even in the health community. So bear with me here. According to Harvard Medical School, most studies find no benefit from multivitamins in protecting the brain or the heart. But if your diet is strongly insufficient, nutritionally speaking, they would, rec they would strongly recommend considering a multivitamin just to make up for vitamins and minerals you may be lacking because your diet is not very well-rounded. A healthy, well-rounded diet consists of five to nine fruits and vegetables a day and the right portions of carbs, fat, and protein, all three macronutrients. Macronutrients are needed to provide energy for the body. Like I said, they're fat, carbs, and protein. Each one of them has to be balanced, but there is no general number. It all just depends on that individual. And I have a four-day energy experiment to determine which macronutrient gives you the most energy and which takes energy away. And then there are those with dual-efficient metabolisms. Essentially, what that means is this individual can eat all three macronutrients and it won't sway in either direction. Each macronutrient has the same effect as the others in regards to providing energy. So some people may gain energy from carbs. I used to think I gained all my energy from carbs, but and I do partially think that, but I did take a test online to determine my macronutrient levels. And it turns out that I am dual efficient, according to the test. Do I think I'm dual efficient? Uh, a little bit, but I find that carbs just make me happy. So that's the macronutrient that I gravitate towards. So in my mind, that's what gives me the most energy. So, you know, pasta, there's bread, you know, it, yeah. And then fruits and vegetables, those are considered carbs. So plenty of fruits and vegetables give me energy. Each individual needs the right ratio of macronutrients for them. So I'd recommend monitoring how you feel initially after a meal and two hours afterwards. Noticing if your energy levels are up or if it dips downwards to indicate how the food affects you. This is basically the gist of my five, this is basically the gist of my four day energy experiment, but just simplified. So you could do it all on your own. But if you do need that extra console, that extra support, please feel free to reach out to me and we could do the four day energy experiment together for $25. However, the best way to maintain your health is to eat a well-balanced diet. If that is not a possibility or it's a struggle at this point in time, by all means, take a multivitamin. But a multivitamin is in no way a long-term replacement for vitamin and mineral deficiencies within the body. The most common vitamin deficiencies in the body are iron, vitamin D, vitamin B12, calcium, vitamin C, and magnesium. Foods that are a good source of vitamin D are salmon, sardines, mushrooms, canned tuna, and egg yolks. Vitamin D is needed to absorb calcium. Both calcium and vitamin D are critical in maintaining bone health and prevent osteoporosis in old age. Foods that are a good source of vitamin B12 are clams, sardines, beef, tuna, trout, salmon, eggs, and fortified nutritional yeast. So a lot of people don't know what nutritional yeast is. And nutritional yeast is high in all vitamin B. So vitamin B6, B12, B8, all of the vitamin Bs, it is, very, it is a very good source of all of them. 
And what is unique about nutritional yeast is that it has a very cheesy te- a very cheesy taste. So multiple dietitians, myself included, recommend either eliminating your cheese consumption completely, which, you know, I think that's a little bit extreme. I recommend cutting it in half and some healthcare professionals agree with me. You know, it's just a personal opinion, but I would recommend cutting your cheese consumption. I keep on wanting to say dairy consumption. No, cutting your cheese consumption in half, especially when it comes to uh, popcorn, casseroles, you know, like I do a really good enchilada casserole and I only put half of the cheese because I put a little sprinkling of nutritional yeast in the flake form, which I get at Big Lots, but you can get it at any grocery store. I believe you can even get it at Walmart and, oh, and natural grocers, if there's a natural grocers in your um, area. Nutritional yeast helps add a lot of vitamin B to your diet while giving you that cheesy flavor and you're simultaneously cutting your dairy slash cheese consumption in half. So it'll be a lot nicer on your digestion. (laughs) And by cutting your cheese consumption in half, you will have less bloating. So two tablespoons of nutritional yeast may contain up to 733% of the daily recommended value of vitamin B12. So not a whole lot is needed in order to reach your daily recommended value. Of course, vitamins and supplements are a useful tool when you're not intaking the adequate amount of vitamins and minerals required for your body. The vitamins are simply there to aid an individual as they increase their healthy food intake with these vitamins in them. When the body is severely lacking in essential vitamins and minerals, there are several warning signs to look out for. Like hair loss, on average, we lose 100 individual strands of hair a day But if your hair is falling out in clumps, that is a sign that you are deficient in iron, which is the most common nutrient deficiency in the world, according to WebMD. If you're experiencing unexplained fatigue, this is most likely due to a deficiency in vitamin D. Other than exposure to sunlight, vitamin D is found in tuna and salmon. Burning mouth syndrome, which can also make your mouth feel dry or numb, This is most likely caused by a shortage in vitamin B6, which can be found in foods like beans, bananas, and spinach. If you have dry skin, it is also a sign indicating a low level of vitamin A, responsible for tissue growth and maintenance. Eating leafy greens, sweet potatoes, carrots, and cantaloupe are high sources of vitamin A. Once you build up those vitamin levels that you're lacking, the less supplements are required to maintain your overall health. Eventually, you'll be able to acquire those vitamins from food alone, which should be the ultimate goal. Before we close out today's podcast, I would like to talk about my Life Lessons From segment. Life Lessons From is a segment that I do where we take life lessons away from everything pop culture, so celebrities, music, movies, TV shows, and everything in between. So for today's life lesson from, I'm going to be talking about Game of Thrones, something that I never ever thought I would ever talk about because, I don't know, Game of Thrones just didn't interest me at all. I'm sorry if I offend multiple people. Um, I did like Game of Thrones, though. I even like the last season. It's my unpopular opinion. I really liked the last season. I was satisfied with everything. I'm not going to get into any spoilers or details or anything like that, but it's kind of hard not to when we're talking about life lessons from, but I'm going to try and keep it very, very vague. Uh, I watched the whole thing and... Oh my gosh, it was a struggle for me towards the end to the point where my roommate needed to come and watch it with me because I just couldn't watch it by myself. I just didn't feel the motivation. It was just dragging out. I needed someone to talk about it with. And it was just easier when she was just there, you know? So it was nice. And we made a whole thing about it. And now we're watching Grey's Anatomy, (laughs) another show I never, ever, ever imagined watching because it is so freaking long. Like, We're on season two right now, episode 11, I think. 
And they're still making that show. And I feel like they're on season 20 or something. So it's just something that I never, ever imagined watching. But here I am. Uh, But back to Game of Thrones. In the end, I feel like everything worked out the way it was meant to. And I feel like just the overall vibe I was getting from the ending, especially the last two episodes, was you do have a fate, but you can also choose your own destiny. Because there were so many options that characters had. And I feel like they got what they wanted ultimately in the end in some way, shape, or form. And that's why I was pretty satisfied with the ending, despite what most people think and say. I was just kind of disappointed in the White Walkers. I thought it would... Honestly, it reminded me of The Walking Dead in the Snow. I'm, I said it there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was cool. Certain parts were really, really cool. Like, ugh, I wish The Walking Dead could do stuff like that. But the life lesson that I took away from all of Game of Thrones was that you can't outrun death. Everyone has a fate. And of course, you do have a say in your destiny just based off of actions and the universe reacting to your actions. So just be very mindful of what you do, how you spend your time, your goals, the people you surround yourself with, and, you know, just be yourself and stick to your guns. Because one character that I, she was not one of my favorites by any means, but... I really grew to enjoy Sansa's character growth. I will say that much. I really appreciated her character growth because I feel like as the seasons went on, she discovered who she really was and who she wanted to be. And I grew to like her more as a character, even though she was not one of my favorites. You know, I have a top three and I have a top five. Top three, of course. Oh my gosh. I'm really going to say my top three. Of course, Tyrion is in my freaking top three. Arya is in my top three. And Jamie. Jamie had to be in my top three. Those are my top three. And two of them are freaking Lannisters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really grew to love Jamie. Ugh. <laughs> But I want to thank you all for listening to this episode of Colorado Health Coach. Remember to rate, comment, and share, and also subscribe for future episodes if you enjoyed. And if you'd like to talk to me one-on-one about how to improve your overall health and wellness, feel free to email me at elizakingcoaching at gmail.com. That is Eliza, E-L-I-Z-A, Coach King, K-I-N-G, Coaching at gmail.com or visit my website www.elizakingcoaching.com for more information about my signature 90-day program or about my monthly health challenges. I also have a H2O My hydration and wellness program that is available. And remember to drink your water this thirsty Thursday and every day until the next episode. Thanks. Bye. Stay thirsty.